Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. This session is all about a topic in memory management and the title is here thrashing. So the different topics which you have learnt in memory management with, that is the page replacement algorithms. Also you have learnt the page fault, you know very well now what is a page fault. And after that there is one more concept called as thrashing. So what exactly is thrashing? I shall explain in this session. Thrashing in simpler words if I have to tell or the formal definition also you can say a high paging activity is called as thrashing. So what do you mean by high paging activity? High paging activity is called as thrashing. So now to understand this sentence high paging activity, I will explain you with an illustration here. Time being you can just ignore the other diagrams which are there already on the board. I'll, I shall come to those uh, uh, diagrams later. So here in this particular uh, topic thrashing, what you can do is to, to make you understand this concept. I will just make you recall that you people are quite aware now that the main memory is what divided into equal size partitions called as frames. And the frames are what allotted to the different processes. Now suppose if there is one single process called as uh, P1 which is getting executed, then P1 pages will be loaded into the memory, fine. So P1 is uh, having, let us take for example, some uh, 8 pages, okay, totally P1 is having 8 pages. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, enough frames are allotted to P1 or we are also taking in one more way. The memory itself will assume to be very small in size, it has got only 6 frames and those 6 frames are allotted to the process P1. So P1 actually has got 8 pages but getting 6 pages is also what for P1 most of its uh, contents are there in the main memory. So the execution goes on smoothly. Then the other 2 pages whenever it is in demand definitely those pages will be replaced with any of the two pages depending on the what page, page replacement algorithm is used. So fine, so we can say that yes the page fault is minimum here because only two pages are there and those two pages can be brought in whenever it is needed by the CPU for execution. Suppose in the main memory another process get loaded P2. Now P2 also needs some pages. So let us take <coughs> P2 is having some totally 10 pages. Now what will happen now the complete uh, number of frames that are there few frames will go to P1 few frames will go to P2. So let us take okay P1 got some 3 frames P2 also got some 3 frames. Later <coughs> there will be some page fault happening for P2 because you can see no P2 is having 10 totally 10 pages. So only 3 frames are given for P2 definitely page fault will happen. Now let us assume that there is one more process that is getting loaded and that process is also having some pages let us take 6 then once again what will happen now this real uh, the frames will be allotted to P3 also now let us take P3 also got some 2 pages then P2 got 2 pages uh, sorry 2 frames and P1 also got 2 frames. So this way the page, the frames are what given to the different processes. But what you have observed is initially P1 was very happy because P1 got all the frames in the memory for itself. Later when P2 came few of the frames got allotted to P2 and later P3 came then once again few of the frames got. But what you have observing is all these three processes, are, uh, processes will be experiencing what page faults frequently. Because they have got less number of frames but their comparatively their pages are more. So as and when CPU is in need of page then it page fault will happen and moreover suppose if all these pages are active pages, active pages is what like sub, uh, P, A. P1 is having some A, B, C, D, E okay active pages are there at uh, time being you can assume that only uh, 3 uh, pages of P1 are there in the memory D and E are in the hard disk. So, but CPU is in need of D. So, they will take out A and place it what? Place the D. D here in place of A and what has happened is A is now in the secondary memory. But immediately CPU is demanding again A. A which was just taken out from the main memory is once again in need. So, we say those pages are called as active pages. So, if all the pages of the processes are active then page fault will frequently happen there. If at all you want to uh, have a plot of CPU utilization versus multi-programming, the graph will appear in this manner. See, I can show you with a graph 
you put what uh, the on the x axis you can write down what uh, multi programming degree of multi programming and on the y axis you can write down cpu utilization what do you mean by degree of multi programming the number of programs that are there in the main memory for execution so if more number of programs are there in the main memory then we say there is a uh, high value for the degree of programming let us assume that degree of programming initial is here that means just one process is there one process is there cpu is what executing that process as and when the number of programs get increased then cpu will also what uh, its utilization will also get increased you can look here in this manner the graph the utilization for the cpu will also get increased now at one particular stage what will happen no number of page faults increases like tremendously number of page faults happen then what is happening the pages are swapped in swapped out swapped in swapped out the system is completely spending the entire time for what to swap in and swap out what about cpu cpu utilization cpu is not having any task to execute uh, the cpu is not having any process to execute because all these processes are queued up to the paging device look here one more thing i can tell you is see in this manner if you look here as and when the degree of multi programming increases the cpu utilization is increasing that we can clearly understand and it has to happen also cpu is executing all these processes but after certain time as and when you increase number of programs in the main memory the cpu is not having uh, what the job of executing those processes because all these processes are queued up to for the paging device you can look here this is what is the cause of tra thrashing causes of thrashing i have written here in a flow okay first cpu utilization is low because what has happened now first initially we made only one process to come over here in the main memory then cpu utilization is only up till here to increase that we what we introduced more number of processes then we are using the global page replacement if you increase more number of processes definitely what will happen page fault will also increases then you have to replace the page you are making use of global page replacement algorithm wherein global is what a process can use the frames that are allocated to any other process also then what will happen page faulting processes uses paging device because of increase in the rapid increase in the page fault all these processes are queued up for the paging device then ready queue is empty definitely processes uh, get executed if they are placed in the ready queue cpu will execute those processes that are there in the ready queue but the ready queue itself has, is empty because all the processes are queued up for the paging device because for all the processes the page fault has happened then what will happen it will lower the cpu utilization it will lower the cpu utilization okay like this you can show the graph further once the cpu utilization is lowered the system thinks that cpu is idle so it will introduce more number of processes that's why you can see completely it is dropping 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 this cpu utilization so from here from this point onwards we can say thrashing occurs <coughs> a high paging activity paging activity is what swap in and swap out so that is what the system is spending there is no useful work done here no execution is done rather than useful work complete time is spent only in swapping and swapping out the pages so this is called as what a high paging activity and the phenomena is called as thrashing so now you have understood this thrashing but definitely in computers you know wherever there is a problem there should be a solution also so how to solve this thrashing what are the there are actually two major methods to solve the thrashing okay we'll see those two methods so let me stop this session here then i'll continue the different solutions that is to solve this thrashing to overcome this problem what are the different methods i shall explain you in the next session so hope you find this session useful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye take care